So let's talk about what are we going to do today. We've, we've got uh, a couple garages built here, the walls. We've delivered one set of walls. We can't do any, any of them because we're waiting on trusses. So we're really scrambling just to stay busy. We've poured one slab. Uh, another slab should be ready to be poured. They'll have it ready this week. And then another one, hopefully next week. So we'll work in the uh, concrete. But we can't, I, we could put the walls up. I don't want to put the walls up until we have trusses. We have one set of trusses ordered that are due probably, hopefully next week. Another set ready to be delivered in about five weeks, four weeks somewhere in there. So we, to stay busy, are going to make a set of trusses. Want to see it? Let's take a look. And that, yes, that's Chad and Dan. I'll be your dad. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, what's your name? Corey. I'll be your huckleberry. Cluckabinger? Okay. <laughs> All right. So you can see we've kind of roughly laid out the truss layout. This is going to be a salt box style. They've cut all, we've, we, with this kind of rough layout, we were able to figure out what the gussets or mending plates are going to be. Um, so we know that. We're getting ready now to actually put in what will, what the lengths will be for bottom cord, the two top cords, and then the webbing in between. I don't really enjoy trust, building trusses, but when uh, when there when there's no other choice, that's what we do. So we're going to be able to. It'll take us today, maybe into tomorrow, to build trusses. So that that will give us a little bit of work. We've laid out the uh, the top and bottom cords of the truss. This is a salt box style truss. This is going to simulate the subfascia at the bottom. This point right here the, for the bottom cord is the outside of the back wall. Wall. <laughs> We're going to have a 12 inch overhang had to allow with a with a 2 by 4 subfascia. So this part I subtracted an inch and a half so it's only 10 and a half inches hanging over of the top cord. We'll put mending plates on here, gussets. Some people call them gussets, some mending plates. Some have probably other names for it. Anyway, so this is the subfascia. Then we'll, we, this is going to have, the garage itself will have um, metal coil stock for the, final, the finished fascia. So that will, will wrap over that. So that's this corner. We'll head up to the peak. Right, well, let's stop right here. So we have, in this particular, this, uh, the garage itself is 24 by 24. So we're using, on the bottom, we're using a 16 footer and a 10 footer. That's flush to the wall down on that end is going to have almost a two foot overhang down there. It's minus the inch and a half for subfascia. But at this joint, we want to make sure that we have a cord. We'll have webbing in here to tie all of this together. So that's, uh, you'll see that in just a little bit. But I wanted to point out that there'll be a joint here with mending plates and there's a joint on the bottom cord with, that will have mending plates. Then going to the peak, The angles that we're dealing with are the front is going to be a 12-12 uh, slope or 45 degrees. The back on this one is a 412 or eight, about 18 degrees. There'll also be a, a webbing going down through here. It's all about triangles in getting strength. So that's, uh, I just, we haven't made and cut those yet. We will. Okay, so that takes care of that part, and then down on what is really the front, there'll be a two-foot overhang. This, this represents maybe the wall on the front going down. 
so there's, there'll be a subfascia out there. So we let this top cord run out past an inch and a half. We do that so when the plywood comes down, if, if we hadn't allowed for it, I hate to mess these up. If we come here and put a subfascia on, when you go to put the plywood on, it's, boop, it's not, gonna, not going to fit well. So that's why we do it this way. We'll line that up again at some point. So again, this is the subfascia on the front of the building. It's laying down, so it's a little hard to picture maybe that just being flipped. So also with this two foot overhang, we will put a support here to transfer that load directly to the wall. So that front wall and back wall, the load will be transferred to the wall. Uh, you wouldn't want to have it without that because over time, there'd be a tremendous amount of stress on this. So even though it's a short distance, this would eventually break. Which would, be, which would be bad. All right, I guess we move on to the next step. We have all the webbing pieces cut, the template pieces. They're going to fit those in where they belong. And we'll temporarily tack those in. We're actually going to do this in two, we're gonna ship it in two sections. So that, because the overall length is like 27 feet and my trailer is only 16 feet and that would just be kind of bulky. So we're going to uh, get those all put back in as a template and then we'll secure them. We'll just kind of tack them off and then we'll build all the other trusses on top of that so that they're all identical. Because if you get some variance in uh, like the top cords, especially when you put the roof sheathing on, you'll see humps and whatnot in the roof and that would be bad. So this will eliminate that. So there it is. I guess all we have left to do is put them together. We had to fine tune it a little bit. Make sure it's imperative that the bottom cord and the two top cords are absolutely straight. So we had to tweak it a little bit down on that end. Uh, we've got that. We're starting to lay these out. We'll start to put them together. A lot of you folks had mentioned, why don't you build the trusses? So we are. <clears throat> so we line up the bottom cord flush, top cord flush. Check the angles. These gussets are, they're 5 8 CDX, eight inches by eight inches. That, we're using uh, three different sizes. When it's just little ones like this that's just vertical, we use a, like a little, I call it a strap. It's a three and a half by eight, just like that. All right. Here goes first nail, official nail. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. You have to work these as you go, of course. Good there. So this two by support transfers directly to the wall that goes down. Very important. Okay. Right here, this has a, a pretty big load, so we're going with an eight by 12 gusset. I don't know if you can see this real well. Let me come up and show you. These are little triangle pieces that we'll use way down in the, at the bottom for strength to tie that all in, then we'll put a gusset on top. Look at me run, Whew. wow. I 
Again, feeling to make sure that these line up with the bottom template truss. All right, the truss is all built. On one side, we're going to split it into two. We'll take one section out here and use it as a template out here, and then we'll use the other one in here as a template so that we can spread out rather than just me doing all the work. <laughs> Chad just, he's in the trailer and says, yeah, yeah, glorify thine self. So here's half of a truss. We'll be putting gussets on, on both sides. Ugh. Both sides for strength. The two gable ends we'll make with verticals um, for sheathing nailing. And then you can see, you can see Chad lugging one out all alone. And that of course is the other half that will be nailed on when we get on site. These are about 17 feet long, so it'll stick out the back of the trailer about a foot. But they're going together pretty well. <laughs> 